Blessed be our God. Forever, forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Surely, he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises, we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken 
for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him, the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish, he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their inequities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured himself out he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. My night is well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you, they trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls in 
encircle me. Strong walls of fashion surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a pot shed. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evil do a circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, 
he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. <clears throat> After he said these things, Jesus went out with his disciples and crossed over to the other side of the Kidron Valley. He and his disciples entered a garden there. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place. because Jesus often gathered there with his disciples. Judas brought a company of soldiers and some guards from the chief priests and Pharisees. They came there carrying lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus knew everything that was to happen to him, so he went out and asked, who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was standing with them. When he said, I am, they shrank back and fell to the ground. He asked them again, Who are you looking for? They said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you, I am. If you are looking for me, then let these people go. This was so that the word he had spoken might be fulfilled. I didn't lose any one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus told Peter, put your sword away. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the company of soldiers, the commander, and the guards from the Jewish leaders took Jesus into custody. They bound him and led him first to Annas. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it was better for one person to die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Because this other disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. However, Peter stood outside near the gate. Then the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, came out and spoke to the woman stationed at the gate, and she brought Peter in. The servant woman stationed at the gate asked Peter, Aren't you one of this man's disciples? I'm not, he replied. The servants and the guards had made a fire because it was cold. They were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter joined them there, standing by the fire and warming himself. Meanwhile, the chief priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I've spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews gather. I've said nothing in private. Why ask me? Ask those who heard what I told them. They know what I said. After Jesus spoke, one of the guards standing there slapped Jesus in the face. 
Is that how you would answer the high priest? He asked. Jesus replied, If I speak wrongly, testify about what was wrong. But if I speak correctly, why do you strike me? Then Anaphas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing with the guards, warming himself. They asked, Aren't you one of his disciples? Peter denied it, saying, I'm not. A servant of the high priest, a relative of one of those whose ear Peter had cut off, said to him, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Peter denied it again, and immediately a rooster crowed. The Jewish leaders led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Roman governor's palace. It was early in the morning. So that they could eat the Passover, the Jewish leaders wouldn't enter the palace. Entering the palace would have made them ritually impure. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered, If he had done nothing wrong, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. Pilate responded, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jewish leaders replied, The law doesn't allow us to kill anyone. This was so that Jesus' word might be fulfilled when he indicated how he was going to die. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I am not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? Pilate asked. After Pilate said this, he returned to the Jewish leaders and said, I find no grounds for any charge against him. You have a custom that I release one prisoner for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted, Not this man, Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was an outlaw. Then Pilate had Jesus taken and whipped. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. Over and over they went up to him and said, Greetings, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Pilate came out of the palace again and said to the Jewish leaders, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know I find no grounds for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here's the man. When the chief priests and their deputies saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate told them, You take him and crucify him. I don't find any grounds for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders replied, 
we have a law, and according to this law, he ought to die because he made himself out to be God's son. When Pilate heard this word, he was even more afraid. He went back into the residence and spoke to Jesus. Where are you from? Jesus didn't answer. So Pilate said, you won't speak to me? Don't you know I have authority to release you and also to crucify you? Jesus replied, You would have no authority over me if it had not been given to you from above. That's why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. From that moment on, Pilate wanted to release Jesus. However, the Jewish leaders cried out, saying, If you release this man, you aren't a friend of the emperor. Anyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he led Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench at the place called Stone Pavement in Aramaic, Gabbatha. It was about noon on the preparation day for the Passover. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, here's your king. The Jewish leaders cried out, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate responded, what, do you want me to crucify your king? We have no king except the emperor, the chief priests answered. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus prisoner. Carrying his cross by himself, he went out to a place called Skull Place in Aramaic, Golgotha. That's where they crucified him and two others with him, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a public notice written and posted on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Therefore, the Jewish chief priests complained to Pilate, don't write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I've written, I've written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, and his sandals and divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt was seamless, woven as one piece from the top to the bottom. They said to each other, let's not tear it, let's cast lots to see who will get it. This was to fulfill the scripture, they divided my clothes among themselves and they cast lots for my clothing. That's what the soldiers did. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. After this, knowing that everything was already completed, in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it, placed it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, it is completed. Bowing his head, he gave up his life. It was
was the preparation day, and the Jewish leaders didn't want any bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, especially since that Sabbath was an important day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of those crucified broken and the bodies taken down. Therefore, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who were crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. The one who saw this has testified, and his testimony is true. He immediately He knows that he speaks the truth, and he has testified so that you also can believe. These things happen to fulfill the scripture. They won't break any of his bones. And another scripture says, they will look at him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take away the body of Jesus. Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one because he feared the Jewish authorities. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the one who at first had come to Jesus at night, was there too. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, nearly 75 pounds in all. Following Jewish burial customs, they took Jesus' body and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths. There was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish preparation day and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus in it. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. You are probably all familiar with the psychological concept of fight or flight. Fight or flight. It speaks of a psychological response of what's called the sympathetic nervous system to moments of intense fear moments in which one is challenged by something directly in your environment that forces you into this place of feeling as if you need to flee or fight back. Peter and the other disciples in the passion story essentially personify fight or flight. And we see it particularly in John's version of the passion that we just read in which Peter is portrayed as fighting back. We're told that The police have come to, with Judas's assistance, have come to this garden to arrest Jesus. And Peter's gut level response is to pull out his sword and strike at one of the soldiers, cutting off his ear. 
In that moment, Peter chose to fight. Later, we see that essentially the disciples, almost all of the disciples, except for the women, and according to John's gospel, one called the beloved disciple, the rest of them flee. Afraid of what might happen to them as Jesus' followers. So as I say, the disciples really do, in a sense, personify this fight or flight mentality. Jesus, on the other hand, provides a stark contrast. He tells Peter to put his sword back away. And instead of fighting back, instead of responding to violence with more violence, instead of trying to escape what is happening to him at the hands of the Roman and Jewish authorities, instead Jesus confronts them by trusting love. He trusts love. Instead of fighting back, Jesus trusts in the enduring transforming power of love. Instead of responding to violence with more violence, Jesus trusts that God's love will be with him regardless of what happens to him. And that somehow, some way, the power of God's love will transform this violence that is being done to him into something that brings life, that brings hope. There are those who would argue, well, Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen. We even heard that sort of in John's gospel. And perhaps that's true. I often find myself thinking differently. That not necessarily that Jesus knew exactly what was going to happen, but rather that Jesus trusted that God's love would overcome the violence somehow, some way. Jesus trusted love. He believed at the very core of his being that it was more important to respond to injustice and violence that was being done to him by confronting his, those who were perpetuating violence against him with the truth of love. And that's certainly not to say that that was the easy path. He had to trust love in the face 
of intense violence and pain and suffering. He had to trust that God was with him as he was victimized by the powers of his day. He trusted love that much. It's hard for us to even fathom the capacity that he had to trust God and God's love in those moments of deep and intense pain, physical pain and emotional and spiritual pain, feelings of abandonment, but he continued to trust. In a case where most of us would respond with fight or flight, Jesus trusted love. It leaves us with the question on this Good Friday, how much are we prepared to trust love. Amen.
Dear people of God, our Heavenly Father sent His Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved, that all who believe in Him might be delivered from the power of sin and death, and become heirs with Him of everlasting life. We pray, therefore, for people everywhere according to their needs. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic Church of Christ throughout the world, for its unity in witness and service, for all bishops and other ministers and the people whom they serve, for Michael, our presiding bishop, Sam and Anne, our bishops, and all the people of this diocese, for all Christians in this community, for those about to be baptized, that God will confirm his church in faith, increase it in love, and preserve it in peace. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all nations and peoples of the earth and for those in authority among them. For Joseph, the President of the United States, for the Congress and the Supreme Court, for the members and representatives of the United Nations, for all who serve the common good, that by God's help they may seek justice and truth, and live in peace and concord. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who suffer and are afflicted in body or in mind. For those who are hungry, unsheltered, destitute, or oppressed. For those who are ill or wounded. For those living in loneliness, fear, and anguish. For those who face temptation, doubt, and despair. For the sorrowful and bereaved. For prisoners and captives and those in mortal danger, that God in his mercy will comfort and relieve them and grant them the knowledge of his love and stir up in us the will and patience to minister to their needs. Gracious God, the comfort of all who sorrow, the strength of all who suffer, let the cry of those in misery and need come to you, 
that they may find your mercy present with them in all their afflictions and give us, we pray, the strength to serve them for the sake of him who suffered for us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for all who have not received the gospel of Christ, for those who have lost their faith, for those hardened by sin or indifference, for the contemptuous and the scornful, for those who are enemies of the cross of Christ and persecutors of his disciples, for those who in the name of Christ have persecuted others, that God will open their hearts to the truth and lead them to faith and obedience. Merciful God, creator of all the peoples of the earth and lover of souls, have compassion on all who do not know you as you are revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ. Let your gospel be preached with grace and power to those who have not heard it. Turn the hearts of those who resist it and bring home to your fold those who have gone astray, that there may be one flock under one shepherd. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us commit ourselves to God and pray for the grace of a holy life that with all who have departed this world and have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone, we may be accounted worthy to enter into the fullness of the joy of our Lord and receive the crown of life in the day of resurrection. O oh God of unchangeable power and eternal light, Look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because, because by your holy cross, you, you have, have redeemed, redeemed the world. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world.
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen.